Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to identify contacts in Sitecore. During this tutorial we will be talking about users, visitors and contacts. I will explain the differences between them and during the main part of this tutorial I will explain how to identify contacts and why identifying contacts is important. Before I explain how to identify contacts and why to identify contacts, I'd like to explain the differences between visitors, users and contacts. A visitor is someone who is visiting a website. A user is someone who has a membership account and can log into our website. And a contact is just a collection of marketing data, all the interactions, page events, goals that have been triggered and collected for a visitor. To identify contacts, we will be using Sitecore Analytics Tracker, Current Session, Identify Us, and we'll be passing two parameters, Identifier and Source. Both parameters are strings, and we'll be using this function in Sitecore 9. And in all the versions of Sitecore, we will be using Sitecore Analytics Tracker, current session identify and we'll be passing only one parameter identifier as an identifier you can use an email address you can use a membership id or you can use a username now i'm going to show you what cycle stores in a cookie file because if a visitor visits our website first time cycle creates a cookie file and sends it to the browser with an id of the device and we'll be looking for this device in Mongo. But just to show you the ID, it's F514. So now I'm going to switch to Mongo, where I show you the device with this ID, and the device ID will be linked with a contact. In Mongo, we will be looking at three tables, devices, interactions, and contacts. And as you can see, at the very bottom, we have a device with an ID that I've showed you in the cookie file, F514. And the device entity, device object, stores last known contact ID. And this is an ID of the contact that has been created for this visitor. So I'm going to switch to the contacts table. And as you can see, we can find contact with this ID. Interactions table stores all the information about interactions, goals, page events that have been collected for this contact. Each interaction is linked with a contact by ID because each interaction stores contact ID. So if someone visits our website first time, Psycho creates a device, Psycho sends a cookie with the device ID, Psycho creates a contact, and Psycho starts collecting interactions. And every time the same visitor visits our website from a different device, different laptop, different PC, Psycho creates a new device, a new contact, and all the interactions will be stored and collected with a new contact ID. And this is important because as you can see, we will track all the interactions, goals, and page events using two different contact IDs even if it's the same visitor. So until we start identifying contacts, there won't be a link between these two contacts and the data that we've collected for the same visitor won't be merged and we won't be able to use and add all the goals and interactions together. Now I'm going to show you a similar situation using the same visitor, the same laptop, but a visitor decided to delete cookies. So at the very beginning, we have a new visitor because this is a new visit. Psycho creates a new cookie, creates a new device, creates a contact and start tracking all the interactions. After a while, this visitor decided to delete cookies and then visits our website once again. And because it's a new visit, Psycho will create a new device, new contact, will send a 
cookie with a new device ID and we'll start tracking all the interactions using this new contact ID. So as you can see, there won't be any link between the current contact and the previous contact. So all the interactions, page events and goals that had been triggered until someone deleted cookies won't be merged with everything that happened ever since. So as you can imagine, all the personalization rules may return different results because we won't have all the history about someone's interactions. Now I'm going to show you the same example, but the only difference between this example and the previous one is that we will be identifying our contacts using registration forms and login forms. So we have a new visit, Psycho creates a new contact, new device, sends a cookie with the device ID and starts tracking interactions. After a while, this visitor decided to create an account and upon the registration, we identify this contact using an email address. So we called identify function and we used an email address as an identifier. Then similar to the previous example, a visitor decided to delete cookies. And of course, during the next visit, because it's a new visit, Sidecore will create a new device, a new contact, new cookie will be sent, and everything will be tracked using a new contact ID. And after a couple of days, this visitor decided to log into our website. And because we can identify this contact by an email address, because we will know an email address of this visitor, Sidecore will merge these two contacts because it will be the same identifier and we will have access to all the data that have been collected from the very beginning, from the first visit. And this is a similar situation to the situation that I described when I was showing you Mongo tables because we can say that this is device A for the same visitor and this visitor created an account using device A and this is device B which is a new visit and a visitor decided to log into the system using the same email address and all the data from two different devices will be merged. Now I'm going to switch back to Mongo where I show you how Sitecore merges contacts. So this is the first contact that I identified using my email address. And the contact at the very bottom represents the second contact. It can be a new device, for example. And because I identify this contact using the same email address, Sitecore merged all the data from these two contacts together, deleted all the data from the second contact, and added a new property successor, which stores an ID of the first contact. To summarize what we've covered during this tutorial, we've talked about users, visitors, and contacts, so you know the differences. We've talked about identifiers. It can be an email address, username, or membership ID. And the main topic of this tutorial, how and why to identify contacts. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.